Welcome to Endurance Noise and Random Musings. I'm your host, Andy Noise, and it is Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. I know that because I just spent the day doing my son's taxes, and in fact, and actually just cashed in a poker tournament as well while I was doing it, and this is my son who is now 29, so this was 14 years ago, 2007. Uh, we went over and visited uh, UC Santa Barbara, and he ended up going to UC Santa Barbara, so he graduated from Bakersfield College, um, at age 14, then he went to BHS, which he's wearing a uniform here, ran for BHS for a couple of years, ran cross country, then skipped a senior year, went to UC Santa Barbara, and then graduated from there when he was 19. So he was testing out the track. He didn't run when he was down there, but he did run for me for a few years in high school. Pretty good runner. Um, here's Josh Harbin. That was at the Lamore track meet way back in 2007. Really great triple jump, long jumper, and he would actually run cross country with us. In fact, I always like the Lamore track. It's purple. Um, somebody I don't remember who that is, and then one of our four by looks like part of the four by four hundred. Bakersfield High has always had great four by four hundred teams, make it state often most years. Um, here we are at Bakersfield College training because Bakersfield High School is a dirt track, hard as rock. Uh, we used to have to drag. Uh, we used to have to make lines with the uh, hurdles. And so we would go up here to BC and train. We were paying Bakersfield College to use the facility, and they still didn't end up renewing our contract because they have terrible coaches up there who are still there. And in fact, my team could beat them. There's Chris, youngster, so young now, back then. Uh, one of our athletes practices in the uh, disc, not the shot put there, obviously. And uh, this was another picture of Lamore. This is the 800 race. And another one of these. Oh, there's old Jeriaki. I see him on Instagram still. More of us training. So that was kind of fun. I go through my old photos. Went out and did my workout. This is the most watered piece of property in Bakersfield. This path is flooded every single day. I don't know why. Um, this was kind of interesting. I owned a record store from 1987 to 2006. And this young man here put out this... Uh, Chris Garage and put out the Cultivation Various Artists compilation, and now it's on YouTube. And Cultivation 92, I remember selling that one and doing really well with it. In fact, it has a song by Sex Art, which is got Jonathan Davis singing on it, so you might want to check it out. And it was pretty kind of fun days back then at my record store. This young lady is the Gatorade um, Athlete of the Year for 2021 school year, um, Sydney Thorson. So congratulations to her. And then uh, just kind of some of my stuff. Had a really good... Oh, me and the Jester did a podcast where we talked about uh, his blue performance and also his quest for 200, 100-mile finishes. So next week he's doing Born to Run. Going to run 100 miles there on Wednesday, Thursday. Then go to Vegas and do a 72-hour race and a 100-mile race. And he should get his 200 finish sometime Sunday or Monday, so we will be doing some coverage on that. And then let's go to Twitter since that's that there. Uh, some endurance Twitter. This was pretty cool. Of course, Desi Linden broke the world best record in the 50K, 259 54, 547 pace. First woman to go under three. Great Britain's Allie Dixon had the old record like 307. And probably the best post was Allie Dixon says, Be right back, just changing my bio. So uh, she ended up losing a record. In fact, the woman who had the record was a, her name was Klecker, and her husband at one time had the record. And her husband and their son is competing in the fifteen hundred. May make the Olympics. Speaking of the Olympics, hundred days to go till Tokyo. Hopefully, we have it. Knock on wood. Um, this is interesting. There's a new trend in race directors allowing runners to drop in down in distance during their event. Drew Jenner writes about what's important to keep going. And this isn't actually a new trend. It's been going on for a long time. And actually, race directors are now not letting athletes drop down. And I really don't like people dropping down. It's, um, you know, I mean, one, it gives you incentive just not to keep going, as this article probably says. The other part I don't like about it is, you know, it is a race. And so you're in a race and say you're in the 50-mile race. And then all of a sudden... Someone decides, you know, when you go left, you can do the 50K. You go right, you do the 50 mile. They drop down the 50K. Well, I mean, a lot of times they don't let them finish in the official results, or at least for awards. But it's still just kind of like nice to know when you start a race, who's in your race. 
And so I'm really glad. I know that at least in fixed time races, uh, when I first started doing them back in 20, I don't know, 2012, 2013, people would drop all the time. And now race directors are actually changing that. So maybe in trail running, it's something new. But in uh, fixed time races, they've been not letting people drop down. And I think that's really a good thing to do. And especially like in a fixed time race, it's like, hey, you sign up for 24 hour, you do one lap, you finished, you know, so... But, you know, we have this whole thing where people just don't want to fail, which is just kind of silly. Um, going, scrolling down here, it says, uh, Christy Laura said, Not surprised that Grand Canyon is number one. It's brutally hot during the summer, which is why I typically hike at night or before sunrise if I'm hiking to the bottom. Uh, the tw- five most deadly parks. And, yeah, I've gone to Grand Canyon a couple times and done the rim to rim to rim. And there's all kinds of warning signs and stuff. And one of the problems with the Grand Canyon compared to like say Whitney is you know Whitney you're not in shape you only go up a mile or so and then you turn around the Grand Canyon the trail is so beautifully built that you can just go down a mile or two and then you realize when you turn around you're like wow this is steep and it's hot and you know they got water every mile and a half but you can get in trouble real quick I still remember when I did my fastest Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim you know we started on the south side we were going up the north side and we started probably like at three in the morning, some dark. We got up, we got to the north side in eight hours. So we hit the bottom of the north side. And the bottom of the north side, it's a, the last five miles climbs 5,000 feet. And so we we're kind of at the bottom with five miles to go. And there was this guy that was bigger than me down there with great hiking equipment and a gal with them. They were both big. And they were sitting there completely exhausted. Who knows what? But, you know, they went downhill. It was easy. And I remember we went all the way to the top and came back down, and there was a poor ranger there trying to figure out how in the world they were going to get this guy out of the of the uh, canyon. I know, like, and I've often clad, the mules aren't allowed to carry more than 200 pounds, and I wouldn't want to get on those mules. You're so tall off of those things, and the trails are so scary. I think they ended up having to airlift the guy out, which was probably pretty expensive. So Grand Canyon, a lot of places, you know, don't fool around with it. It definitely can be dangerous, and people do die out there. Um, little lighter subject. Jonathan Gold says, uh, talking about the uh, women's fifteen hundred Olympic trials. We've got Jenny Simpson is running it. Shalane Shelby Houlihan is running it. Ellen Prayer is very likely running it. Women's fifteen hundred will be the best events at the Olympic trials, and with the five k no longer a fallback option, it's do or die. And uh, Jenny Simpson, there's a really good um piece I saw on YouTube, two or three uh, segments on her and her career. And a lot of it I didn't really remember, so it was very fun to watch. So you should definitely check that on the YouTubes. Um, then, of course, kind of good and bad news. Rich Gonzalez, who I've known for many years, I used to help him out with Prep Cal Track. He's also the race director of the Arcadian Invitation. He says, due to Titan Health Department restrictions on non-essential interstate travel, this year's meet will be now only be California high school only. In 2019, they had more than 200 schools from outside of California took part in their 500 plus school event and it is an amazing nationally class rate race and the men the boys 3200 there'll be like a dozen or more kids going under nine flat it's friday nights kind of fridays the relays you know and then they got the four by 800 which i love the four by 1600 and then the elite meets kind of on saturdays i may try and get down there and check it out this year but uh, i can totally see that you know people aren't traveling outside the state and so Rich is at least going to have the event, and I have to check on when it is because it's usually always around Easter. So I need to get on the uh, Internet and find that out. So that should be – I think I'll definitely go to it. Oh, of course, the thing is now they have great coverage on television, unlike <laughs> the world record 50K attempt or uh, Galen Rupp's and Jordan Hussey's half marathon attempts. Uh, the Arcadian Invitational is always on, tele- on the uh, Internet, and usually free. And so we'll finish up with, um, let me go here, my Strava. I actually got some good sleep this thing. Oh, my friend Adam went out and did some work this morning, this afternoon at least. Got some, well, something there. Um, so, you know, I got up this morning. I got up late and, uh, let's work here. Got up, I didn't heck, 7.10. I did my spin KG workout, which I ride on my spin bike for six or seven minutes and then do a little kettlebell. Went out and did uh, 6,000 yards. Actually, that's not correct. I did six times 1,000, and it was pretty dang slow. And then this afternoon, 
I uh, rode the bike, warm up, and then I headed out and did three times a thousand. Again, pretty slow. Came back home, did some kettlebell drills. Actually had some pretty good barbecue. Barbecued up some hamburgers and then played some poker, which I cashed in. So I was really happy with that. Look at my uh, Fitbit data. Heart rate's still not down where I wanted. I wanted the low 50s at night, but, you know, that's the way it is. Didn't really get it very high today. Um, sleep here is great. Eight hours and 19 minutes. So I slept seven hours last night, and I had a nice hour and a half nap today. I was tired and beat up. And then, of course, the exercise, just a bunch of walking, some yellow, way too much blue. <laughs> Definitely not doing too well. Um, this I actually bad on the swoop on the water drinking only 48 ounces and then the old weight it for some reason yesterday was down below 17 it's just kind of bounced all over the place i'm not sure if it's my scale or whatever so stay healthy